Doctor, I understand that you've um, published some studies regarding uh, the relationship between diabetes and sleep apnea. Could you elaborate on that? So Dan Einhorn, the doctor, was noting that his patients were telling him a lot about fatigue, and when he followed that up, it was about sleep. And a lot of it was sleep apnea, so I first noticed it as a, as a clinician. And in looking at the literature, I realized that there's a clear association with obesity and sleep apnea, but we really didn't know what was the connection with diabetes and sleep apnea. So we're lucky enough uh, here at Scripps to be able to get a study started uh, with a local sponsor uh, to see just what is the prevalence of sleep apnea in adults with diabetes. It just wasn't known. And what we found was extraordinary. I mean, I knew there was going to be a lot of sleep apnea, but I was not prepared for the numbers. If you're um, an adult male above the age of 65 with type 2 diabetes, you have a two-thirds chance, two and three chance, of having measurable sleep apnea. So the women have it about half as much, non-diabetics half as much as that. So basically, if you're a male, an older male with diabetes, you have about four times the risk of sleep apnea. Lack of sleep for any reason has the same effect as overeating or not exercising in terms of your uh, propensity to weight gain. It's, it's the third leg of the stool. Mm -hmm. Sleep apnea is just one of the most common ways to not have enough sleep. So people who don't sleep enough, for whatever reason, have a number of stress hormones, adrenaline, cortisol, etc., that aggravate all the propensities to, to weight gain. And one of the most effective ways to lower blood sugar in a person with diabetes is through treating sleep. And so it's a very exciting new area today if you look at guidelines for the treatment of diabetes, these guidelines do not include routine screening for sleep deprivation or sleep apnea. And it'll be very soon, I, next year or two, those guidelines will be modified to include sleep. It's such a powerful factor. And by the way, this is just for diabetes. You know, di the diabetics are kind of the, the canaries in the coal mine. You get to see things first in them. But the whole recognition of how this sleep deprivation is contributing to obesity in America will become much more obvious to everyone soon. Doctor, what are, what are some of the newest advancements in medications for the treatment of diabetes? For me as a clinician, the most important uh, areas in diabetes involve weight loss while you control blood sugar. The dirty little secret in the treatment of diabetes is that almost everything we could give you until the last few years will make you gain weight. So there's something um, in people with diabetes, many of them who are really overweight, that probably contributes to why they got big in the first place. One of those things is satiety or feeling full. Many people with type 2 diabetes um, never feel full. They stop eating at a certain point, but they don't feel full. Part of how we know this is one of the um, products I mentioned earlier, exenatide from amylin. When we did the research with exenatide, many of the subjects report they must be feeling nauseated because they stopped being hungry. And they just weren't uh, accustomed to that notion of not being hungry. And so this normal satiety is, is simply uh, missing in these patients. The other thing is that they're insulin resistant, so they're probably more fuel efficient than some of the rest of us. And so the same amount of calories is more likely to put weight on in them than perhaps in, in others the sheer number of people who are going to be walking around with diabetes is so much greater because they'll have more years to have diabetes and more years to get complications uh, now at a, at a younger and younger age. It depends a little bit on the group that you're looking at. If you look at whites in California, where we're relatively lean, uh, I don't think there's going to be a huge explosion at all. However, if you look at African Americans, and especially the, uh, the Hispanic group and, and Asian Americans, they may have as much a, a, as a doubling in the next generation. And that's a huge number of people with diabetes to be thinking about.